right, so let's get started with that. Um, I'm going to define a variable right away. I'm going to use this later on, so uh, we can kind of just ignore it for now. But it's going to be called interval. I'm going to use this when we do the automatic uh, slideshow. So let's start a function, uh, which we call change image. And we're going to have a parameter of argument, our parameter of argument, parameter called direction, which is basically, remember that we call the this function, you either get a negative one or a positive one, depending on which way you want to go, forward or backward in your slideshow. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to define this variable current. And that's going to be my current image, the one that you actually see on the screen. And so some jQuery here. This, what the, let me write it out and I'll explain. OK, what's happening is this is grabbing the div of slideshow and then the image that's active. So as the page loads up, the only image that's active, remember, is my first image right here, Sam. All right, so right now it's grabbing that slide or that image. Now what I want to do is I want to go forward. Let's, let's write the one where we, the logic for when we go forward. So now if the direction is 1, meaning go forward in your slides, we have two cases. We have the case where, where we just want to go on to the next image. Okay? And, but our other case is what happens when we're already at the end of your slideshow. When you press next, you want it to go back to the first one. Okay, so those are our two cases. So here's our first case, and this is how I'm going to write it. If the current slide, take the next one. So basically, your your current image, the one you see, this is the jQuery function next, which basically grabs the next sibling. Uh, so if you whatever image you're at, take a look at the next one, and then we'll say length equals zero. In other words, what this is doing is it's saying, hey, the image you see right now. This is basically saying, is there another one after it? So if you're at the end of the slideshow, the next one will have a length of zero because there's nothing there. And if that, so if, if this means we're at the end of the slideshow, then what we're going to say is we're going to say the next image will be, instead of saying the next one in the slideshow, we're going to say go back to the first image. Okay. So take your your next image will be the what this is saying is the first one in your list of images. Else, oops, there we go. Else, well, if if you're not the last, then we certainly have another image to go forward to. So I'll just say the next image would be. Well, let's go up here. It will be, well, we could do this. The current image, take the next one. So the next image will be the current one, but then the one after that. So take the current image, go after that. That's your next one. OK, so that's going back, uh, forward. Now, if we want to go backwards, it's really the same logic. So let's, let's do this. All right, so let's say I'm going back one. Well, then what I want to say is, is the previous image. So remember that if you had like, um, let's come down here, image one, image two, image three. If we're at image two, that's the one you see right now. What this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, is there a previous image? Is it meaning, is there a image one? Oh, there is? OK. Well then, ignore this for a second. The next image is going to be, well, just the previous one. So again, if you're at image two and you click previous, since we do have an image before this, what it's going to do is it's going to just take the previous image. That's what this means. Now let's say you were at image one and you pressed previous. Then this is going to be zero. And if it's zero, well, if I'm at the, pre the, the first image and I press previous, I want to get sent to the back of the list. So I want to go to the last image. OK, so that's all that. 
what next? Okay, so now we have the logic to go forward and backwards. So now it's all now we're basically just have to do all the uh, transition stuff. All right, so you're at your your current image. Now what I want to do is I want to add the class previous. So what this is basically doing is it's taking the slide that you see right now and it's sending it back to the Z index of 9. Now all the other images have 8, so it actually doesn't make it disappear. It's the Z index of 9 is still the one closest to you, so you still see it. So nothing's changed. Okay. Uh visually nothing has changed. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take our next image, the one that I want to show to you. What I'm going to do is change the CSS on it to have a zero opacity, meaning that um, the next image, when it's when it's going to be shown to you, it's originally going to be completely transparent. Then what we're going to do is add a class to it, and the class is now going to be active. So at this point right now, this is the image that's on top of all the other images, but it's completely transparent. So which image do you actually see? Still the previous one, the one that we want to move from. And it's in this, the previous one that has now a Z index of 9. But that's the one you still see, even though that this one's technically on top, it's transparent. Okay, so we got to fix that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to animate. And let's see, how do we want to animate? We're going to add, we're going to change the opacity then to 1. We're going to do that 1500 milliseconds, so 1.5 seconds. And then we're going to have a callback function. Now this callback function, since what haven't we done yet? Well, the only thing we, because all right, at this point now, the new slide is completely. Well, you can completely see it, um, but remember the previous slide now has that z index of nine, but now that it's it's in the background, I want to actually make it have the same z index as all the other images. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that current um, slide or the one that we were just on, we're going to remove the class active, and previous. Okay. I think that's good for now, so let's go check this out. Uh, so let's refresh. Okay, so if we press play, no, nothing happens because we haven't written anything for that. But if we press next, see we... So, okay, let's go back. Uh, let's refresh. Okay, so when I press next, I wanted Sam to drop back a level. But I don't want to drop back a level with all the other images. I want it to drop. So this is technically a 10, Z index of 10. I want to drop it back now to a 9. Notice that when it's going to be very slow. Maybe actually, maybe I can do this slowly. Um, let's do 4,000. So four seconds. Let's see if that makes it obvious. All right, so when I click next, Sam's there. You still see him. You still see him. Now he's gone. So even though that I sent Sam back to a Z index of nine, you still saw him until the the image that was on had the Z index of ten was completely faded in. Faded in. Yeah. All right. And so now if you click next again, you still see the chalkboard. Still see it gone. Notice you didn't see Sam because Sam had a Z index of eight. While chalk chalkboard had a Z index of nine, so you kept seeing that until this image was completely back in. And then if you press next, we should go back to Sam. There you go. Uh, previous button work? Yes, it does. So all that's good. So now what we have to do is work on the uh, auto button.